President Kennedy said our children are our greatest resource and our best hope for the future. They are our precious treasure. We must not have them be afraid to go to school or go to church or go to the movies or anything else. We owe it to the children to preserve a culture in which they are, again, protected. I say to our colleagues, we really don't want to hear about your political survival. Your political survival means nothing compared to the survival of our children. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi yesterday, just hours before the passage of the Protecting Our Kids Act. Joining us now, two Democrats who voted for that new gun safety bill, Democratic Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill of New Jersey. She's a U.S. Navy veteran and member of the House Armed Services Committee. And Democratic Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado, he's a U.S. Army veteran, also a member of the House Armed Services Committee as well. Good to have you both with us this morning. You know, we had uh, Clint Watts on a couple of days ago, and he was talking about when he got in the military that had him a gun, but he'd have to carry around that gun uh, for quite some time before he got training ammunition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Congressman Crow, I, I, I would guess, again, yeah, not loaded. I, I, I would guess your experience much the same, that you had to go through very extensive training before you were able uh, to even hold a loaded weapon. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I've been around guns since I was 12 years old. I remember uh, starting hunting as a, as a young teen. Uh, and the first thing that I did was I went to the local YMCA and I took a hunter safety course. And I learned that your relationship with guns is a serious one, that you have responsibilities, that it is a somber one, and you treat it with respect. Uh, and then I started hunting and I became an Army Ranger after that. Uh, and guess what? Uh, when I was in Iraq and Afghanistan, I didn't carry my hunting rifle with me. And when I was in the woods hunting, I didn't carry my assault weapon from the military with me. And the reason was, is they are vastly different weapons that are designed to do very different things. Uh, they, these are weapons of war that we're talking about. They don't belong in our streets, in our churches, in our communities, in our synagogues. Uh, that's why uh, Mikey and I have worked very hard to try to push to uh, uh, ban these weapons in our communities. Congresswoman Cheryl, let me pick up on that question with you. You served in the United States Navy. We've heard this argument from many of your Republican colleagues lately. They'd say, well, look, you can be 18 and join the Army. You ought to be able to hold a weapon if you're 18 and not in the Army in this country. And they use the Second Amendment as a defense of that. Um, having been around these weapons, fired these weapons, what's your view uh, about whether, say, an AR-15 or any other semi-automatic rifle should be that easy to get in the United States? Well, Lily, like Jason, I grew up in a hunting culture. My father's a hunter, um, and he's the one that taught me how to shoot. And I shot these um, rifle, uh, shot assault rifles and handguns in the military. Um, but they're weapons of war. And Jason and I aren't just veterans; we're parents. We have young school-age children, and we know that these weapons were designed to kill as many people in as short a time as possible that bump stocks are designed to increase the speed at which these weapons can be fired. Um, and they have no place on the streets. The only thing they are designed to do is kill people. Um, and so, like so many parents, when I sent my children off to school these past couple weeks, I had that, that kind of heartache as I watched them go wondering, what if I was one of those parents that never saw their children come back? And so. It occurs to me that as Jason and I have been trained to protect people in the military, um, it's shocking that it's been harder to try to protect people here in the halls of Congress, as we're working so hard to get just basic, basic gun safety measures passed. Congressman Crow, we've heard in the last couple of days from Republicans up on the Hill where you are that uh, ranchers need these, farmers need them to shoot prairie dogs, said one senator, shoot varmints, to shoot feral pigs on farms that ruin their crops, to shoot raccoons that kill their chickens, things like that. What is your assessment of that argument when contrasting prairie dogs, say, with children in a school in Uvalde, Texas? 
Well, first of all, there's just there is no comparison. But secondly, this is a lie that's been made up by the gun manufacturers. It's just not true. For 150 years, farmers and ranchers in Colorado and every place else did uh, vermin control, and they protected their herds with uh, simple rifles and shotguns. Uh, they, they've never needed assault weapons. But in the last 10 years, the gun lobby determined that they can sell more guns and they can prevent common sense reform and regulation by creating this and fabricating this story that this is part of uh, our national heritage and that farmers and ranchers need this stuff. They've never needed it. Uh, and the same with home defense. You don't need an assault weapon for home defense. Everybody knows it's not even a good weapon for home defense. And if you feel like you need it uh, to protect your herd or to defend your home, then you're simply just not shooting straight and you need shooting lessons. So uh, this whole thing is absurd. It's a lie. It's been made up. And it's been made up to try to sell more guns and at the expense of our children. Congressman Cheryl, good morning. Jonathan Lemire, I want to switch gears slightly. Obviously, uh, there's a, the debate right now about guns on Capitol Hill, but that's not the only thing going on. The January 6th uh, committee begins their hearings tonight uh, in prime time, uh, hopefully captivating the attention of a nation. What do they need to do, in your estimation? What story do they need to tell? How can they shake the sense into some people whose perhaps opinions have already so hardened about that day? Well, we've already heard um, so much evidence coming out of the January 6th committee, and I think they just need to continue to do their job, and that's bring to light for the American people how much planning went into this, um, how, you know, what kind of intent went into trying to overturn our democratic process to keep a president in office despite the will of the American people. I think that's what people need to understand. This wasn't simply a protest gone awry. This was thoughtful. Uh, planning that went into very strategically trying to overturn our democratic form of government. Congresswoman Cheryl, uh, what does it say if uh, your counterparts in the Senate uh, kill this legislation? Do they, do Republicans care more about their assault weapons than they do kids? This is legislation that addresses what happened. Mika, I've been spending the past week um, with my community, hearing from parents who are scared for their children, hearing from children who are scared uh, to go to school, who are scared for their parents who are teachers. Um, it is such a horrible impact on the community. And we hear about thoughts and prayers. And you know, there's people across the country that can think about what's going on in this country. There are people across the country that can pray for better results. There are very few people in this country that have the power to legislate on this, to actually work to keep people safe. And that's what our communities are calling out for across the nation. And if you, as a member of our legislative body, don't want to legislate on this, don't want to do anything to keep our families safe, then you, know, you should really consider another job. And I hope the people that you serve will consider finding someone else to serve. Members of Congress, Mikey Sherrill in New Jersey, uh, Jason Crow of Colorado, thank you both very much uh, for coming on this morning. Thank you for your work.